Hi everyone, I hope you are all doing well. So today um, I am going to take you around the garden to kind of show you what the plants are looking like right now in the middle of August. So here's the site of the garden that you normally don't get to see. So what you're looking at right now is a blood good Japanese maple and we planted this here for about, I would say, sorry about the wind. Um, it's about, I think, five years old now and we've got one of the tiny little thing in a two gallon and it has grown so, so much. And in our garden zone, being so far up north, it is actually okay to be planted in full sun, which I have here at the front garden, which is a south facing garden. So here's a close up of the foliage on this blood good Japanese maple. And look at this, the Japanese beetle have eaten them to the skeleton. So sad. Anyway, I love the foliage on this. Initially, I was going to plant it in a container and keep it uh, near the front of the house, but it wasn't doing well in the container, so we decided to put it in the ground. So let's go over here to the small little island that I have between our property and the neighbors here. So the two bobo hydrangeas that we have here are starting to fade a little bit. They're starting to dry out because of all the extra heat and sun that we've been getting for the past few weeks. So here we're coming across the first of the three Anna's Magic Ball that I have in the front garden. And I think of the three, this is the largest in size. And on this side here, I have a white cedar uh, globe. And then in the middle there, I have a Chelsea clematis that's out of bloom right now, and it needs to be kept back. And I haven't been able to do that until, I will probably wait until it cools down a little bit before I cut it down, because we are in full sun here. And as you can see that there's quite a bit of uh, damage on the plant from all the extra heat that we've been getting. And initially, uh, when I planted this Chelsea Clematis, it, because it does like a little bit of shade, that I was hoping that this hydrangea would be a little bit bigger and it would probably like provide a little bit shade for the Clematis so that it doesn't burn out as much. And here is the highlight of this little island right now, I think. It's the Vanilla Strawberry Hydrangea with its white fluffy blooms and it's starting to turn a beautiful bright pink color right now. And in this corner, I've got a sort of a burgundy color Japanese uh, Barbary. It's a dwarf, small size Barbary. And there's the powwow um, coneflower as well as the Alberta spruce, dwarf Alberta spruce that my husband has uh, pruned into a topiary with three globes. So here is a uh, group of zinnia seedlings that I uh, transplanted last week and then I've got a container or planter with the variegated geranium that I got on clearance for $1.50, three plants in there. And then this is the planter that I sold the zinnia seeds in. Um, and then I've got a planter there that I will show you in a sec on the other side. The zinnia seedlings in here are starting to bloom as well. You can see a couple of buds on the uh, some of the plants there. And this is a gorgeous variegated geranium that I love. And I know I've said it before, but I love anything that's got a bluish green and white variegation. And so I think this is probably gonna be my favorite geranium just because of the foliage and the gorgeous, beautiful, uh, hot pink flowers as well. I think that's really, really stunning combination with foliage as well as blooms. And the planter here has all the zinnias all budded up and I was hoping that by the time I do this video at least one or two of them would be blooming but apparently they're not blooming yet but it looks like this one might be opening up soon so perhaps by the next time I do the next video you would see them bloom because like I said I don't know what color blooms these are so I'm super super excited about this. So this is one of the planters that I planted up um, back in spring. Uh, there was a dwarf Alberta spruce that I got, I think for $4 that I planted uh, last December. And then I planted a uh, purple superbell or I guess a purple color uh, cola 
Nakua and a white one. And um, here, I think they were about $2.50 each back in the spring. And then all of this alyssum came back from um, seeds that self-sold from last year. So that's pretty amazing, as well as the uh, Creeping Jenny here that I actually um, had uh, divided from the other container and in the other container they actually winterized in the container in our zone as well which is pretty amazing I think but it's coming along pretty nicely and I love how the alyssum it's compact and it's full of blooms and it's kind of draping over the side of the container which I really really like Here's another pretty sight. I love the upright sort of blue-green foliage of this um, beard tongue iris. I think it's really, really pretty. And this is a petunia um, that also sold so from last year as well. So pretty, pretty amazing. Um, and this one, it's just another uh, Japanese Barbary. And again, um, my happy returns daylilies have also started to rebloom so that is actually quite amazing as well so where i am standing you can actually see the entire front uh, island here right in front of the house as well as the two containers that i planted up in spring as well as a grouping of plants that i have at the front porch and the spiral green mountain boxwood that I have at the front right next to the steps going to the front door. The crystal blue salvias, uh, they're actually done with their second flush of blooms I think but one of the most beautiful thing about the salvia is that they are always attracting honeybees, butterflies, moth, so beautiful beautiful plant that I don't know if you recall back in May I think that was the highlight in the spring garden at that point and now they're actually blooming and they're attracting tons and tons of pollinators to the garden as well so here we're coming across to the I would say one of the earliest uh, blooming panicle hydrangeas in early summer they are I would say like the most gorgeous plant in this garden in early July when they first start to bloom and these blooms are now a sort of a deep pink or I guess almost like a burgundy and it's slate's cap so it is one of the sort of best plants that you can plant to attract pollinators to your garden. So here you can see the royal carpet alyssum. It's starting to rebloom for me after I cut them back uh, about I think over a week ago. And we're coming across to the group of three bobo hydrangeas that I have here. And the bobo uh, hydrangea panicles are now a, sort of a blush pink in color, which I think is really pretty. So here's a group of three patriot hostas that I have here and you can see the foliage is being eaten by slug or snails or something but uh, and also I also need to cut back the uh, bloom stalks on them as well. And here we're coming up to the Crimson Queen Japanese maple that I have here at the front garden. And it was the most beautiful, gorgeous, bright red in spring and early summer. And now that uh, we're in the sort of mid August, the heat actually and the sun as well has turned it a bit more of a green color. And looking at the garden right now makes me feel a little sad because I was so getting used to seeing the banana cream daisies here at the front that now without them, it looks kind of bare, like it's missing something, right? And here's another beautiful combination of plants with the uh, snow carpet alyssum, the globe white cedar and the group of sedum as well as the blooms of the little lime overhead. That I think is really, really pretty. Oh, and I forgot to mention that uh, there's also the blue fescue grass and the blooms of the crystal blue salvia. That makes it really pretty as well. 
and recently I think there was a question about the color of the little lime blooms being white and uh, the answer is that their blooms are never ever white so they first start like a chartreuse kind of a green color and then they turn to this sort of creamy yellowy green color and then eventually this yellow uh, creamy color will turn pink all the way till fall but you know what I think they look really pretty even though they don't look as white as what I initially thought. So if you're looking for something that's white, the little lime will not give you that because I think this is the whitest as they ever get uh, throughout the blooming season. So what you're seeing here is the little lime, I think at the sort of the highlight of the season right now. It is the most beautiful, gorgeous, chartreuse, yellow green color on the panicles. And here you can see that this uh, little lime panicle is starting to turn a little bit of pink as well, right? So from now on, the panicles will start to become more pink and uh, remain so until the end of the season. But like I said, even though they're not white, they are so, so pretty to me. And here you can see the stems of my dwarf boomerang lilac that's starting to rebloom beautifully as well. And here we are coming across to the group of three Autumn Joy sedum that I have planted right over here. So right now at uh, mid-August, the blooms on the sedum start to turn a little pink and eventually by the end of August, they'll become more pink and by fall, they will be a beautiful, gorgeous, dark pink, reddish color. So here is another gorgeous view that I love as well with the uh, blooms of the sedum, the blush pink of the bobo hydrangeas, as well as the foliage of the boomerang lilac and the seed head of the penstemon, as well as the reddish color on the crimson queen Japanese maple. Just really, really pretty to me. And here is a bobo hydrangea that um, it's actually still a white color. It has not turned pink yet. And as you can see, the foliage on this uh, bobo is a little bit of a yellow, right? So basically this is not a newly planted hydrangea, but it was kind of new uh, only because I lifted out of the ground and I divided up into a couple of different pieces and I made one into a standard that you see in the planter in the back. So technically it's behaving as if it is a new plant. So it's not really fully rooted in yet. So that's why sometimes with a plant that has not been fully rooted in, the foliage sometimes can be a little bit more yellowish color because they are not very efficient at sort of, um, you know, moving water up to the plant and nutrients to the plant yet. So eventually, you know, once they get rooted in uh, in the next year or so, uh, the foliage and everything should be relatively healthy and green. And here's another beautiful grouping of plants here. Um, that's the kitty clematis that I uh, recently planted in that planter. I've got a little planter of the reddish color perilla leaf. And here you've got the angel wing succulent. I love that sort of silvery blue color tone on that. And then this one with the planter, same thing as what I had over there, except that I have a petunia that kind of self-sewed uh, the pink one from last year. So anyhow, I'm not sad about it because I think that's a gorgeous combination against the purple and the white alyssum, as well as the sort of a greenish color, yellow creeping jenny. And here at the front of the house, I love, love these two containers. Um, and it was all accidental because initially I thought um, the lissom was not gonna come back, was not gonna self so so it was just gonna be the pink super bells as well as the white super bells. But, um, you know, they all kind of naturally came together into this gorgeous sort of stunning container in my opinion. and. Like I said, the alyssum was self-sewed, the creeping jenny, winterized in the container, and I pretty much just spend $5 in each one of these containers, and this is how they look. It's 
just stunning. And here at the front of the house, you see this is a container that I planted. I think I spent $2 on this wax begonia. Um, this is the white mums that actually came back from last year in the container that I transplanted here. And then I had a piece of the Autumn Joy sedum when I was dividing back in spring that I put in a little container there. And then this one here container, I planted it up with a piece of the Patriot Hossa from the garden, a couple of Sun Patients, as well as a lobelia but i think this looks really really pretty now the only thing that i don't like about this is that the containers are pretty small and they do need to be watered every day so anyhow but it's worth it because it's so so pretty here at the front when i go out here and sit in the evening sometimes so we are in the back garden right now and as you can see this is the limelight uh, hydrangea tree that I created last year compared to the one that I created five years ago but look at the massive size on these panicles they are huge and um, I was thinking that they would be very floppy uh, once they fully open but amazingly they're actually all upright and the stems are just so so sturdy so I am just very, very hopeful that uh, they would not be as floppy as I initially thought. So I am so, so glad and so happy. Look at them. So pretty. Now the um, blooms, like I said, they're huge. And there's one at each of the ends of the six stems that make up this canopy. So I think next year I have very high hopes for this standard. I think it's going to look most beautiful even more beautiful than the one that i created five years ago right and my william morris davis austin roses are starting to bloom again and look at this gorgeous blooms look at them let me just come a little closer look at this it is most gorgeous that apricot color and then eventually it fades to this sort of like a pink blush pink apricot color so so pretty and the fragrance is so strong i love it and the beetle the japanese beetles also love them as well so 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 sad but i think the beetles should be gone in another week or so so hopefully uh, these will be left alone once the beetles leave the garden Do you remember these um, Super Bell containers that I cut back a couple weeks ago? Uh, anyhow, at that time, you could still see the size of the basket, but right now, as you can see, the blooms are now dripping over the side and you can no longer see the container. So I think that's starting to look really, really pretty as well and fresh as well, right? So here's a limelight on the uh, east side of the garden. And this limelight, like I said before, it is a five-year-old standard that I created five years ago. I think the limelight hydrangea panicles, uh, the standard that is, it's looking most incredible this year. The stems are strong, even though the panicles are a little bit smaller, but they're upright and they're not floppy like they were last year and uh, i'll put that in the link for you to view but this year look at them isn't that the most incredible gorgeous thing ever it's just i love it and i don't like panicles that get floppy so this is just a sight that i really really am enjoying right now I think at the same time last year, these were flopping all over the place and I had to hold some of the panicles up with clips and stuff like that. So I'm just so, so thrilled with how these turned out this year. So, so pretty. Even the panicles at the top, they're quite large. I think some of them are probably about a foot uh, in length, but even then they're not floppy. So. I am just so happy and they are starting to turn a little pink right some of the panicles you can see there's a hint of pink on them so it looks like from now on these panicles will start to look more pinkish so here's the other limelight tree and it's looking upright and gorgeous just as nice as the other plant on the east side
I love these right now. Look at them. They are most gorgeous. And it seems like honeybees love these as well. Look at them. Oh. Here you can actually see my happy returns day lilies are also starting to rebloom in the back as well. And here's a view of the blue fescue grass and the panicles of the firelight tidbit. So the firelight tidbit um, panicles uh, are most, I think they are starting to look most gorgeous right now. And comparing the uh, blooms of the firelight tidbit compared to the bobo, you can see that the bobo uh, blooms are somewhat a slightly smaller sort of petals, whereas these are a little bit more larger in size. And at this angle, you can see all the panicle hedgerangers, they're actually looking like they're glowing right under the sunlight. And you can even see the contrast between the bobo panicles here. These are all the bobos here. And then you can see the incredible as well as the limelight panicles right there. Just a beautiful, beautiful sight right now. Oh, and don't forget the endless summer bloom struck pink blooms right there as well. And here we're coming across to the endless summer lace cap twist and shout macrophylla hydrangea. There are lots of buds that are starting to form on new wood as well. As you can see that there's one there and there's a tons more at the tips of each of those stems. Now, sometimes you might find that when these macrophylla hydrangeas are planted in full sun, they might be wilting a little bit in the late afternoon sun. So if you live in a zone where you have really intense afternoon sun, these should not be planted in that location. But I think some people always ask me, how do you have macrophylla paniculatas and smooth hydrangeas all planted in the same bed? And usually I just tell people, you know what, in our zone, we are so far north that the intensity of sun is not as strong as in a warmer zone climate. So we can get away with planting macrophylla as well as smooth hydrangeas in uh, full sun. However, there will be a little bit of wilting, like I said, um, in the afternoon when the heat is so intense during the sort of the hottest part of summer. And here are some fresh bobo panicles here. They're still white and very, very fresh looking. I love it. And this view of the garden from here looks most gorgeous right now. Look at that. I think it's so pretty right now. So you can see that the color on the uh, firelight panicles are starting to sort of dry out a bit. So the pink is not as bright as what they um, were last week. But even then, I think they are most gorgeous. Look at that. It is so pretty right now. Love, love it. And the Maynite salvia is starting to rebloom as well. So I did cut it all the way back, almost to the ground, and these are fresh blooms that have uh, started recently. And these dark pink dianthus are still blooming, um, and that's because I've been deadheading them regularly, so they're continuously putting out new blooms. And don't forget this lava lamp flare hydrangeas. They are looking absolutely gorgeous right now. I love the fact that they are a lace cap and conical shape panicles and they also attract a lot of honeybees and pollinators to the garden as well. I love it. And you can actually some of them at work right now. Do you see that? Ah, oh, what a lovely sight. And these panicles are humongous. They must be at least 13, 14 inches tall and they've got that beautiful sort of pink on the bottom that's gradually moves up to the tip and eventually the entire uh, panicle will be pink by fall which i think will be very beautiful as well 
So here I've got a collection of planters in the middle of the patio here. Um, one of them is the Hawaiian Punch Hibiscus that just started blooming about a week ago. Um, and there are some fresh blooms that are about to open up there. I've got a geranium that I recently potted up that I got for 45 cents. And then I've got a container of uh, begonias there. And then lots of hot peppers in those other containers. And then in the middle, you'll see that I've got a container with lots of the Royal Carpet Alyssum and a Bobo Stander as the centerpiece. And at this angle, you can actually see the two blue jangles, Macrophylla hydrangeas there. The blooms are starting to dry out, but they were most gorgeous earlier in July when they just started open. Um, and there are blooms on there. Like I said, I fed it with a little bit of ground sulfur as well as some used coffee ground. And that made the soil slightly less alkaline because native our native soil is actually um, quite basic. So the blooms tend to be a deep pink but because of the additives that I added to the soil the blooms actually were some were lavender some were bluish and we had some lighter pink shades as well and here is an update of the Eglintine David Austin roses that I moved here earlier in July it's growing it's putting out blooms but again is being eaten by the Japanese beetles look at that oh there's a little honeybee there I wonder if it's okay or not, but look at this. It started to put out a bloom and I think, yep, there's some holes on here. So those beetles will probably get them by tomorrow. And the other um, eggling thyme rose, it's just behind this lava lamp flare hydrangea. It's not getting enough sunlight, so it's not growing as well as the one that I just showed you. Love, love the limelight view from here. Look at my bobo hydrangea panicles. Aren't they so, so pretty looking right now? Just the way that the light hits the petals and everything else, they look like they're shimmering. So, so pretty. So here is the other firelight hydrangea that I have in this corner here of the garden. So I don't know if you remember, but this is a cutting of the original plant that I showed you earlier. I rooted about, I think two years ago. So this is, it's really its second year in this space right now. So it is not very healthy. And I think the explanation for why it is um, sort of undergoing chlorosis is probably because its roots is not quite established yet. So because it has so much sort of foliage and blooms to support, and it's very inefficient at sort of supporting all of that and cycling up all the nutrients as well as water. So it is not very efficient at uptaking the iron so therefore it's undergoing chlorosis but i did treat it with ground sulfur as well as used coffee ground and it does seem to help a little bit but i should expect it to be sort of better next year once it's sort of a more mature and it's uh, well rooted in so up close, you can kind of see that the upper leaves are a bit more green than the leaves below, right? So I think it is getting better with all the treatment that I've been giving it. But regardless of it being only two years old, you can see that the plant is almost four feet tall and three feet wide and the panicles are larger than the original mother plant as well some of the panicles are as tall as 12 or even 13 inches and here is the update on the Dakota Burgundy Penstemon. And do you remember that early in July, we had a lot of powdery mildew on the plant because of all the rain we had. But now that we are getting more drier, sunnier weather, you can see that that has cleared up and the foliage is looking lush once again. And I love, love Penstemon. And in combination with hydrangeas, I think it just provides a beautiful contrast in its leaf texture as well as color. And I love the seed heads on the Penstemon as well. 
Normally I just leave them on because I think it's just really, really pretty with the color and the sort of texture that they provide against the blooms of the hydrangeas. And here you can see the Invincible Wee White uh, blooms are dried and they're sort of a greenish color. And again, I don't cut these off, although I should because they are supposed to be re-blooming. So if you cut them off, they should be sending out more blooms. But you know what? I think that dry greenish color actually looks quite pretty against the uh, penstemon burgundy color of the foliage and the seed head. So that's why I leave them on as I actually like them looking like that. And here's a closer look of the Profusion Zinnias that I got from Lowe's. So this uh, container, I got it for $3.50. And I actually normally don't plant red in the garden, but these I think have changed my mind. They are most gorgeous, velvety red. And then as they fade, um, the blooms turn a bit sort of an orangey red and then an orange color. And eventually they dry off into like a yellowish orange. I think the color changes are just so so pretty and i think they've changed my mind uh, about planting red so i am collecting seeds for these and next year i will be planting them up in containers again because i think they're just absolutely gorgeous and here you can see the bobo uh, panicles here are looking a little drier right now right um, so these ones were a bit more blush pink last week, but that pink has now sort of changed to a greenish color. And from now on until fall, these will turn a darker shade of blush pink. And I think that will be really just as gorgeous as well. And here's an update on my Pilu and Westerplatte clematis. Do you remember in that video where I cut everything back to the ground? Well, look, it has grown so much since then. So eventually these vines will grow all the way up to the top of trellis. Right now I think they are about four feet tall and it looks as if there are some flower buds on the um, vines as well so I cannot wait to see them bloom pretty pretty soon. So here is the little red elf Coreopsis. It's starting to rebloom again. And again, this is another shade of burgundy red that I like as well. Again, it's a new plant for me um, that I planted this past May. It's the most beautiful. So I think I'm gonna divide this and put them everywhere in this corner here to make a bigger sort of bush. And here you are looking at the little quick fire blooms. And again, this was a new plant for me that I planted this past spring. And because this is a most recent plant that I planted this past spring, um, it's hard to kind of predict when they're supposed to bloom in my garden zone. But starting next year, I should be able to give it a more precise estimate of when it should be blooming in our zone. But looking at this right now, you can see that the panicles are looking a little dusty pink, right? So I think that's really, really pretty against the sort of burgundy red color of the Coreopsis as well as the white panicles of the bulbul hydrangeas. So here we're actually looking at the Wygelia Sonic bloom it's a pearl color and i love love this plant in spring they are covered with blooms and as soon as they are done blooming i cut them all the way back and they're starting to put out a lot more new growth as well as more blooms throughout the season And here I want to give you an update on this tiny little vanilla strawberry hydrangea that was transplanted here in this past spring. And if you recall from last year in fall, I divided this, accidentally discovered actually, on attached to the other vanilla strawberry when I was transplanting uh, it to the front garden. So I took this piece put it away in the uh, garden and transplanted here this past spring and it now has a really really long stem on here which makes it a perfect candidate to turn into a standard. So anyhow I think I'm going to say goodbye for now and I want to say thank you so so much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care and I will see you on the next video.